Davy Zebra Monthly. You no, know, people just see zebras, mm. and um, sometimes we really don't ask ourselves, uh, is it the same zebra that you are seeing uh -huh. in terms of species? Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, zebras are everywhere in the country, and. Yes. Um, if you go to the south, to the west, to the east, to the north, you normally get zebras. Yes. But today we are going to focus on one specific species uh -huh. called gravy zebra. Yes. And um, you learn more about it. Anatomical differences between the zebra species are fairly sparse. The mountain zebra is small and has evolutionary differences associated with living in the mountains. They have had pointed hooves that are well suited for negotiating the slopes and they have a loose fold of skin underneath the chin seen often in cattle, which the plains and gravy zebras do not. They also live in the rugged mountains of South Africa and Namibia. As for the plains and gravy zebra, they live in arid and semi-arid plains and savannas of Africa and they are both found in Kenya. Yes, the two species are different mm -hmm. and um, I'll give you at least three notable differences between plain zebras okay. and gravy zebras. So one of the distinct characteristics that you can see, mm -hmm. that you can physically see, mm -hmm. is um, the size of the two animals. Gravy zebra is bigger in size mm -hmm. compared to the plain zebra. Another one is like, uh, is, um, gravy zebra is, looks like a horse-like. In, oh. in particular of the body morphology, it looks like a horse. Uh -huh. But then the plain zebra looks like a um, domestic donkey. Uh -huh. But however, the other difference is when you look at the stripes. Yeah, when you look at the, um, the thickness of the stripes, you realize that gravy zebra has uh, narrow stripes. But then the plain zebras would have um, much uh, wider stripes. And also when you look at the, the bellies, mm. you realize that uh, the plain zebras have the stripes goes around the belly. Mm -hmm. But then the uh, gravy zebra you see the berry is white, so the stripes do not go um, around the berry. And also you can look at the ears. Plain zebras have a uh, smaller uh, tipping ears, okay. but when you look at the gravy zebra, uh -huh. it has large and rounded. Each species of zebra has its own conservation status. The plains zebra is by far the most popular of these species and is the most likely to be encountered on safari. Plain zebras is quite a lot. We have uh, over a thousand plain zebras. The mountain zebra is considered vulnerable because its population is low and susceptible to decreasing. The gravis zebra, the largest of the zebra subspecies, is also the most threatened of the three and their populations are currently isolated to central and northern Kenya with a minimal number in Ethiopia. Gravy zebra is, they are very few. When you look at the um, population of the gravy zebra in the country, mm -hmm. we have about 2,800 in the country. Mm -hmm. That's now, we are talking about the natural population, the population that you can find in the world. I'm not talking about the population that are in zoos. So we have about 2,800 in the country, and that's why they are endangered. Mm -hmm. And um, the population used to roam in quite uh, bigger landscapes and even outside our country. Mm -hmm. For example, initially in the 1970s, you get gravy zebras in Eritrea, Djibouti, Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. But because of the habitat degradation and uh, human population increasing, mm -hmm. thereby fragmenting the habitat, uh -huh. the population has dwindled or go down. Yes. And um, that being the case, we have now the natural population only remaining in, in Kenya mm -hmm. and southeastern part of Ethiopia. We have about 3,000 now and we had about 200 in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. So we can talk of the population of in the entire world, mm -hmm. the natural population being about 3,000. 3, yeah, so in 1970s, they used to be about 15,000. You can imagine the number has really gone down. Ah. And that's why now we have to manage them properly yeah. so that we can, we can build up the numbers back yes. to, 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 to normal. Mm -hmm. Now, coming back to Lewa. Gravy zebras, we have about 300 individuals in the conservancy. The rest, or the major other population of the gravy zebra is found in the northern Kenya. In the northern Kenya. Yes. Okay. And um, this species is naturally, uh, spe or, or it, it is special to the north because yes. it is only found uh, naturally in the northern part of the country. That's where you get big aggregation. In other areas, you get small uh, groups. Yes in the southern but um, the major or the entire population mainly is in the northern part of the, the, of, part. Of the country. That's why you get uh, people saying they are northern speciality species mm. because if you go to most of the conservancies and um, parks in the south uh -huh. of, of our country mm. then you'll not get them. 
So basically, you get them in the, in the, in the northern part of the country. They have lost a considerable part of their original range. Remaining populations suffer from harsh competition for food with other grazing animals including livestock. Timothy tells us some of the methods he uses to monitor the gravy zebra population. The, the management of these species, um, we do it a bit differently because um, one of our management tenets when it comes to conservation of wildlife is knowing their numbers. The way we do it here is that we normally go to the field, take photos uh -huh. of the gravy zebras on the right side of the belly. The reason being, uh, being that um, the stripes are unique, okay. maybe I can start from there. Yes, so yes. both right and, and left stripes are unique. But now you have to establish a standard because you want now to specialize on one side yes. for consistency. Yes. So on our, on our part, or in the country, we normally focus on the right side of, um, of um, gravy zebras. Okay. And um, maybe to add on that, uh, still there are research done on plain zebras, mm -hmm. still uh, working on the stripe patterns, mm -hmm. and they normally take on the left side. Just an easier way of just differentiating the two species mm -hmm. easily mm -hmm. uh, for, for matters of management. So when now we take the, the photos of the gravy zebras, yes. we take them into a stripe identity database mm -hmm. that reads those uh, coat pattern, mm -hmm. just like your fingerprint. So the stripes are unique just like your finger, uh, wow. finger, finger prints. And when now we take them to the database, you can be able to tell whether, when this animal first got into the database. So when, uh -huh. when a young one is born, yes. you can take the photo, uh -huh. take it to the database, uh -huh. and um, <coughs> once you take it to the database, you, you use a computer algorithm okay. to read those stripe patterns. Okay. Um, and when you read those type patterns, then you can, you can check whether that species already exists in the database. So you can have an animal that probably got into the database um, 10 years ago, for example, when it was young, yes. and now you can now start monitoring it. Mm. Over time, keep on taking the photos mm. until it gets old or dies or moves out of the conservancy because you have migratory gaps mm. that those animals can, can, can move through. So you can be able to monitor that animal at individual level. If you go to the field like um, three, four, five, six times and you haven't gotten that animal, yeah. then it is most likely that animal is dead. And um, just to back up that data, uh -huh. we, we also do a bit of um, um, our, predi our predators scat analysis. So we analyze the waste, the waste of um, lions, mm -hmm. just to try to get the, um, to know their diet. So when you analyze the lion diet, yes. you can know whether they have, whether zebras or other gravy zebras are a part of their diet. So oh, that wow. information also backs up uh, what this database does. Yeah. So if you see you are losing quite a number of uh, gravy zebras, yes. there is very little recite, recite, recite. Mm. Then you realize probably there is uh, more predation on yeah. gravy zebras. Yeah. And now you can now impose some management, yeah, you know, uh, issues like maybe translocation or the lions, just trying to manage the population. Some of the zebras are fitted with the GPS collars which provide scientists with critical information concerning their movement patterns and whereabouts. We will be right back after this break. Unataka kuendeleza the good times? <laughs> Basi Panda Go TV ikupandishe. You always know what I want. Ukilipia subscription ya package ya juu, unapewa upgrade to a higher package free. Panda tukupandishe, upate the best entertainment on TV. This is the last. Panda tukupandishe. Go here, yeah, like you see, these are the fabrics we use for the sofa. Yeah, there are different types of fabrics. Saba. This is the best way to go. It color, mm -hmm. it roll. You know, like this is a line. Well, 2022 is behind us. 
2023 is here with us. What are your plans? We're here at TV47's Morning Cafe have great plans for you. We're talking about information, we're talking about entertainment, we're talking about the greatness for the year. So make sure that you're always with us every morning. Welcome back. Before the break, we got to join Timothy Kaaria on a zebra monitoring expedition as we learned about zebras. Now one of the gravy zebras here is getting their collar removed and we got the rare opportunity to accompany the resident vet Dr. Matthew Mutinda and his team as they prepare to knock down the animal to remove the collar. We always make the joke that is a royal equine. It's the most beautiful of all wild equines and uh, we, we, we take pride in, in, in conserving them and mm -hmm. steadily see the numbers rise. Mm -hmm. It's never easy to knock down a wild animal mm -hmm. and uh, we want to do that as safely as possible. Uh, knock the animal, bring it down. We normally do that for various reasons. Mm -hmm. One of the most common ones is treatments. Gravy zebras have snares, they have injuries and uh, mostly uh, varied injuries. Uh, they, we might, they might have a snare, a wound injury. Yeah. So we like to knock it down. It goes down safely, mm -hmm. position it properly. Mm -hmm. We do the treatment mm -hmm. and after the treatment, we work the animal up. Okay. We might want uh, some researchers, like this is an old collar we want to remove, okay. which has been left there. Uh -huh. And after the, re the research is done yeah. and the battery life of the collar is done, yes. we want to get it off. Okay. So that is our objective today. In the high prepare tranquilizer that mm -hmm. knock down the animal, mm -hmm. we go down. My assistant, myself, will uh, take the collar down. Yeah. And after that, we will take blood samples, mm -hmm. which we normally use to, to monitor the, the health status of the animal. Because one of the most um, uh, challenging things for wildlife in Kenya mm -hmm. is, uh, is, is diseases and disease mm -hmm. problems, mm -hmm. especially gravy zebra. Mm -hmm. In the past, they have been uh, decimated and their numbers uh, reduced due to diseases. A major disease of concern is, uh, is anthrax. Due to the concerted conservation efforts, it's only when recently gravy zebra numbers have started to go up. But mm. before then, they were being in the 2000s mm. with community conservancies, yes. creating um, awareness okay. among us people. Mm -hmm. And in uh, and, uh, a place like Lewa uh, Wildlife Conservancy, yeah. we are now at the at the 3,000 3, number or so. And uh, we think uh, with with such efforts, we we cont will continue to do better. They start off by preparing enough tranquilizer. Medications are given according to to body size. I've been a vet for the last uh, well, the last twelve years. I I I I, want, I wanted to I went to vet school to try to be a small animal vet and a cow veterinarian. But uh, somewhere in fourth year, I got an attachment with Kenya Wildlife Service. Okay. And that is what changed my direction. I said, wow, these guys can make elephants sleep <laughs> and wake yeah. them up. Yeah. And uh, I said, oh, OK. So I want to try, try that. And uh, that's, how, that's how I ended up. It's, 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 it's exciting and uh, it's dangerous, too.
checklist I have a dad I have all the drugs fine with me you your blood utaika pale utaika kwa mfuko yako so we have a backup plan for the for the backup then it's time to identify the animal and dart it The doctor misses. The team then prepares another round of tranquilizer. In the first that did not go according to plan. It did bounced, bounced off. You have to have a plan B. It's it's, it's wildlife. Yeah. It's wildlife, and it will do as as it wishes. Yep. So we're gonna go around it and try and get a, go have another go at the animal. Okay. Let's. Oh, when you go up. Zebras with young colts avoid predators such as hyenas by forming a cluster around the mother and the young one rather than bolting. The gravy zebras, sensing that we are targeting the matriarch, surround her and her young colt. This time, however, the doctor doesn't miss. It takes about five minutes for the drugs to take effect and the team proceeds to put a blanket over the zebra's head and pour water on its body. Mm. The, drug, the, the drug we use makes the animal quite hot, mm. so we want to cool it down. Uh -huh. yeah. The team proceeds to remove the collar and take blood samples. prevent it from getting excited oh. and yeah we don't want it to be to be excited as we do the procedure oh, okay. it's probably pregnant it says it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a female and you saw it here as a fall there it is fall yeah it's a fall the final thing we always make sure we take a blood sample uh -huh. for our storage yeah so I'll take a blood sample and after the sample we're gonna wake it up Going to the hospital, you see if someone take a purple top uh -huh. and a red top. Uh, so you check for different protein. different things. For us, the same. Mm. So I'll give John this one. He will keep, and when John is happy, he will come. Then we will we'll work up the animal together. Okay. Once the team is done, the doctor gives the zebra a reversal drug. The zebra wakes up and runs back to the safety of its herd. It was a rare opportunity to get close to such a majestic animal, one that we do not take for granted. Kenya is a wildlife country. We are so blessed to, to, to be in a place where uh, we've, 
of immense and uh, immense wildlife. And this is something we would love to share with, with, with the rest of the Kenyans. Not everybody can go to a national park. But, uh, we, can, uh, we can expose young people, mm. old people, mm -hmm. hope the citizenry of Kenya and the world, the wildlife uh, in Kenya. That's it for today's episode of TV47 Wildlife. 